Today in the Joy of Editing, we're taking a look at the Dark Contrast Filter in Nick 8 Color Effects. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, we're looking at the Dark Contrast Filter in Nick 8 Color Effects. This one is all about adding punch and texture to the darker tones while keeping shadow detail looking alive. I have four different examples so we could check this out on different images. And here's a quick heads up. If you're thinking about Nick Collection 8 or any DxO software, you can grab 15% off new purchases with my code Dave Kelly. Links are in the description and you can try any app free first. If you use my links, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. Thanks for supporting the channel. Well, let's dive right in, and I hope everyone is doing good out there, and I hope you're enjoying the holiday season. If you look to the right of the interface, you'll note that I have the dark contrast filter right here in the filter stack. Right now, it's turned off. Now, I'm going to turn it on by clicking this checkbox, and you may say, Dave, that is horrible. I could never use this filter, and this is what happens a lot when you're using... Uh, Nick color effects. You may turn on a filter and it looks horrible at the default setting, but don't worry about that. We can alter this. Now we have four different adjustments right here. We have detail extractor, dark detail extractor, that is brightness, contrast, and saturation. Let me shut this one off. Dark detail extractor is the heavy hitter in this filter. So what I like to start with is pull back on the dark detail extractor the whole way and then just start to build it up slowly and stop where you think it looks good. And for me right here at 46%, when you increase dark detail, it opens up the darker tones and adds texture and separation. So you see more detail in the shadows and the image gets that gritty, punchy definition. Let me uncheck dark contrast. Here's before and here's after, but you notice how dark the image has gotten. So we need to correct that and that's what brightness is for. So let's take our brightness and crank it up to, I'm gonna go right here around 27%. And now I wanna add a bit more contrast. Right now it's at minus 45% by default, but let's increase that up to right about here, 42%. Now, if I shut this off, it looks like it lost a little bit of saturation, a good bit of saturation. So let's go ahead and crank up the saturation to right there, 5%. Now I want to shut this off. Here's before and here's after. But look at all that beautiful detail the dark contrast filter has brought in. Now we also have shadow and highlight protection. By default, they're set at 100%. I'm going to take the shadows the whole way off. And I'm going to take the highlights the whole way off. And you know what? I don't think I really need those. So I'm going to keep those off. Let's do a split screen comparison. So come up here to compare. Click the middle button. And now let's drag this to the right. This is before. Now I'll drag this back to the left. And here is the after. But look at all that beautiful detail in the dark contrast of this image. I highly recommend you take the dark contrast filter out for a test drive. Now let's move on to this image. Now we have tons of detail in here and a lot of dark shadows and so on. And I think the dark contrast filter will really coax a lot of detail out in here. So let's give it a try. The filter's off. I'll click the checkbox and turn it on. And you might say, this is awful. I'm not using this filter, but don't stop there. I like this detail and you know what? You may think I'm crazy, but I want more. I'm going to take it up to 99%, but don't forget we have brightness, contrast, saturation. I'll start with brightness. Let's go ahead and lighten this up. I'll come up to 17%. And now let's go to contrast. We need more contrast. And that would be the global contrast, just a normal contrast adjustment. Let's move this to the right to increase that contrast. And I'll take it over to right there, 6%. And now let's go with saturation. Let's give it more saturation. I'll take this up to 10%. That really helped a lot. And now let's take off the shadows and let's take off the highlight protection. And now let's shut this off. Here's before and here's after. See, we're close to the look that we had before, but now we brought out all that detail. Let's go ahead. I'm going to come up here to the middle of the interface. Click right here, the drop down, and let's go into 200% and really look at this detail. Let's turn on the uh, split compare. So that's before and now this is after, but look at all that beautiful detail. Isn't that amazing, all that detail? Did you think we could bring that out in this image? 
but with this filter we can definitely do it. Now let's try it on this image, see if we can bring out some detail in the darker shadow areas of the image. It's already got a lot of detail, but let's see if we can help it even more. I'll go ahead and turn on the filter by clicking this box. Now these are the default settings, but you see the halos around the edges here. You got to really watch that, especially when you have a lot of edges. And I like this detail. I'm going to come to 82%, but we need to protect our edges and we could use a color range mask to help us. So come down to your local adjustments, click this button right here, and let's click like right about here. And now you see the sky has dropped out. Now if you click this button right here, you can see your mask and we've selected that area. Now see this link right here? If I click this bottom feathering handle, I can feather the entire color mask out a little bit. And then if I click this handle, I can widen that range to maybe right about here should be good. If you click this link, you'll unlink these handles and now you can move each one of these handles independently. And now if we'll click this button again, we can see the image back. Now we're not done here. We need more adjustments. I'm going to go ahead and brighten this up a bit up to right there, 14%. Let's just give it a little bit of contrast right there, 28%. And let's give it some saturation. And I'll take this to right there, 0%. And now let's shut off the shadows and the highlights, see if we need that protection. Let me just give it a little bit of highlight protection, maybe somewhere right about here. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. But look at all that beautiful detail. You can see detail back in here now. If I shut this off before, there was not much detail back in here you could see, but now when I turn it on after the dark contrast filter, we've got that back. So I'm really happy with the way this one turned out also. And now let's try dark contrasts out on these mushrooms, a macro shot. I'll click the checkbox and turn the filter on. And again, it looks horrible, right? It really, really does. This time, I'm going to take the detail. I'll take it the whole way off, and we'll build it up slowly. And I think I'm going to stop right here at 37%. Let's give it some brightness up to right there, 18%. And let's give it some contrast. I'll bump this to the right over to minus 9%. And now some saturation. I think that's really going to help. So let's bump this to the right. And I'll take this up a good bit, up to 31%. Now let's shut off the shadows. You know, I might leave that shadow protection up and let's pull off the highlights. And I think I'll leave that up too. Now let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. But look, we have some nice color up in here now. If I shut this off, that was missing in there before. We brought that out. We brought out that nice dark contrast to add some detail into this image. And it really looks great. Let's do a split screen comparison. Here's before and watch that detail wash over this image. Isn't that amazing? I really enjoy this filter and you got to give it a try. Well, there it is, everyone. The dark contrast filter right inside of Nick 8 Color Effects. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.